Shell Reef Bayou, Cottonwood Bayou, all these areas back in here. This past few days, if you were able to take advantage of this with the higher tides that we have had, we've had some big bull tides that has pushed in here since uh, probably Saturday, Sunday, Those that, that tide has dropped out, but the past week, all this water back in here was really high, so it was a great opportunity if, if you were able to take advantage of that to get back in some of these areas. Uh, especially the Shell Reef Bayou is really good. Cottonwood Bayou is really good. So when these things just get inundated with lots and lots and lots of water like we've had, you can cover lots of area back and you can get your boat in here. You can get out of it, man. You can walk these shorelines. You can walk edges. You can fish the middle of it. So it really sets itself up, it sets itself up really good for some opportunistic fishing. Uh, lots and lots and lots of baits. Just, you know, our, our water temps have finally got pretty well stabilized for the most part. We're mid-70s, upper 70s by the end of the day. Had that last little cool front that came in on this past Saturday. Had a little wind event that took place there, but that dropped temperatures just a hair, not a tremendous amount, but just a little bit. And that does uh, play a little havoc with your fishing because it just, as far as the safety, as far as getting to some of these areas, you got to face some open water, which be kind of sketchy sometimes, but just depending on what type of boat you have and what type of skill level you have as far as running your boat, it's okay to get to these areas safely. Uh, but once you get back in these things, it's a great area because you get lots of, of protection from the wind. You can still feel it, but it's not going to beat you up in here. You know, main things we were targeting back in these are primarily were redfish, but we were pulling some nice trout out of some of these areas, uh, catching some pretty good fish in the slot area, uh, especially the redfish. You know, found a, a few tailors that were up on the shorelines and all these types of areas, you know, topwater bait was pretty good throwing those back in these areas like that. So you're getting lots of good action on those particular things like that. So, you know, if you're a top water junkie and you can get back in these, depending on what the tide is now moving forward, that's going to change somewhat. But this past week when we were in there, that was really a lot of fun to throw those things up against the shoreline, throw it out over the grass beds, the potholes, and you get opportunities, we get some blow ups some takes, lots of swirls. So we, you know, primarily, uh, throwing that and then once we got into where it was just uh, not super aggressive as far as the topwater action went we dropped down to our uh, burner shads and both into the original few through threw a few supermodels in there as well but primarily originals and burners has been that has been the ticket for us on those particular things so those particular flavors uh, you know burner the uh, firecracker acid rain mud minnow had been very good for us Chicken of the Sea, White Ice, um, El Guapo is a newer one that, that down south has come out with. It's kind of got of a reddish orange kind of look to it, so it's a really great color. Copperfield has been pretty good as well. And then, of course, you should stand by uh, Magic Grass, Twisted Tea. Those have all been very consistent, continually been consistent. Primarily throwing with a 16th-ounce jig head, even with the more water that's in here, just so you can allow that bait to really work for you, not get hung up in grass. But once you kind of get the hang of that, that the 16th ounce works really good for you. We're working edges, working these shorelines, get back in some of these little coves and little guts, seeing some where that bait was just kind of pushed up in there. We had some really great opportunities catching some redfish, caught some quality redfish. So there's kind of a little bit of everything. Even pulled out a flounder or two in there as well. So it's all been pretty good for the most part. But again, once you get uh, those opportunities, paying attention to what your tides are doing, um, it's a really great thing to get back in these back lakes. And, then, and it's not just these particular back lakes because all this water is all over our estuary. So if you're fishing, you know, fishing south of the Middle Bay systems, there's a bunch of back lakes there that you should, you could have taken advantage of if you did not. Um, this just happens to be the area that we were really kind of focusing on to make sure that, see what was going on in here. So, and, it, and it paid off for us, so it really did. Uh, we have a full moon that's coming. We're gonna be on it pretty quick. So make sure that you downsize those, those uh, profiles of that bait, throwing the smaller things, which is where the burner shad and the knocking tails come in, really good for that. Um, so make sure that you uh, downsize on that. Majors and minors, always a key thing. That's where we primarily caught the majority of our fish is in and around those time frames. Make sure you're incorporating those into your fishing day to continue to be productive. Paul's Mod area down here in Long Reef Bend. Uh, the last, this last week, we've had some really quality days down in these areas, you know, again, with the amount of water that's been in here, so you can really push off the shoreline to you, all the way up toward Jaybird Point, all these back lakes that are in here, shoreline edges, 
You know, if you've fished the Long Reef Bend area, you know that there's a bunch of duck blinds that go up and down that little edge that's right there. So what we had, had found, you know, we'd found fish that were up in shallow, up close to the bank. Again, with the amount of water there, that bank area really opened up for us, presented us opportunities that we typically wouldn't have had on a normal tide when it's really low. So when that water pushes in there like that, so it really opens it all up for us. So we get somebody up on the shoreline, get somebody a little bit further out, further out, further out, all the way out to where the duck blinds are, fish those edges that are out there because it's a real subtle drop. It's close to those duck blinds. If you have walked that before, you know this. Your feet tell you a lot when you're wading. So you can see what's going on with structure-wise. You can feel it with your feet and understand what these fish are doing and why they want to be where they're going to be. Grass areas have continually produced some really solid trout for us, you know, undersize, uh, slot size, a few that were a little over the uh, current slot right now of 23. So we've had some really quality days that were up here. Found a few black drum mixed in here in some of those areas. Uh, obviously redfish up in these areas. And again, the things, the main things we're throwing, we're throwing plastics, you know, 16th ounce jig heads in both the down south and the knock and tail. Uh, we've had a few in there that's been throwing the top water up against the shoreline there and have a few opportunities at that. But up in this particular area here for us and the crews that I've had come into these areas, the plastics on 16th ounce, uh, Twisted T, Big Papa Pearl, uh, the Copperfield, uh, White Ice, Chicken of the Sea, all those, you know, Mud Minnow and the Burner Shad, Firecracker has been really good, especially up in these areas because some of this water has been fairly clear because that, that grass will filter all that water out for you. So when you got a uh, prevailing south, southeast breeze and it's pushing across there, that, that grass will filter that water. So having something that's got a little bit more uh, translucentness to it or a little bit more pop in there has, has been very uh, productive for us. So that firecracker flavor has been really good. You know, in the, uh, the knock and tail, again, uh, uh, heavy metal, greenback, have all been very solid colors for us. Doing a lot of great things with that. The Rogue has been very good. Um, glass Minnow, when that water has been very, uh, really clear for us, has been another great flavor for us to do as well. And uh, the Smoke flavor. Those are a little bit smaller baits. Again, we've had big high pressures in here for the last couple of days. And we've got big, big moon that's coming. So you may want to consider, again, what I talked about in the last video is making sure that you downsize those. And those particular flavors, the Glass Minnow and the Smoke are or three and a quarter inch bait so they're really productive size wise is what you really want because those fish you know when they start getting squeezed in the old gut so they're not real apt to want to eat very much so when you present them something smaller then you have better opportunities during time frames but again our time frames have been productive in majors and minors and that's the things that we've been focusing in and around in between those bite frames we've just tried to scratch out some fish here or there just to kind of see if we can develop a pattern while we're in between those bite frames that way. See if there's a particular one flavor or other that's been uh, more productive than other. But everything's been pretty consistent across the board as far as all those different colors that I suggested. Uh, we've caught fish on all those, so there's not one that really stood out more than the other. But again, locate, see what you got, you know, work the edges, pay attention to what your tides are doing because, uh, you know, we've got a little fluctuation with water again now, so it's starting to really drop out on us. So that'll get, again, at some point, that's going to come back for us. So just, you know, pay attention to that and see what you're going to do. And once you locate what that uh, tide is, then it, it kind of dictates to you where you need to fish. So look for your bait in these areas. Um, pay attention to what your majors and minors are doing, especially what's going on with the weather. Rattlesnake Point, all this area down through here. Uh, you got these islands in here. You got little cut-throughs, little guts, uh, especially when you get, the time frame when you get the again when the water that we've had in these areas has been very good out here so this is typically a pretty shallow point so when you get on this you'll see the old broken down duck blind that's here off on that point before you get to that drop off so we've been up on these this flat here working these areas out here and uh, have we found trout uh, pulled off a flounder or two primarily not very many redfish uh, scattered redfish here and there but primarily trout up in this area. So if it's something that you're trout-wise that you're really wanting to start to target uh, and looking for, this is an area that you should you should look. Uh, you got some shale that's in here. You got some nice hard-packed sand that's in here. You got a little mushy mud from from time frame up in here in some of these areas, especially if you get back in these back lakes back here and toward Pete's Bend in that area. But again, uh, you know, rattlesnake has been very good for us. We're working the shorelines on the outside. These fish are really starting to push up to that hard-packed sand. 
We've even located a little bit that are starting to show up on some shale reefs. Uh, not super amount of fish are showing up on the reefs just yet, but they're starting to transition that way. So um, a few days ago, we, we fished a particular reef that was out here in Copano and uh, found some fish on it. So that's just kind of a nice indicator. I said, okay, they're starting to kind of transition that way and starting to starting to look for it so moving forward depending on what water temps are and where your water levels are that's something that you may want to put on your your radar is to uh, locate a particular reef if you if there's one up in here that you like out of copano uh, start to look for fish on the in and around those things there's going to be bait that's going to start showing up on it and that structure is a great thing for those trout to really hang off of that especially when you have water levels that begin to kind of fluctuate somewhat you have bigger tides like we've had the past week and then they start to drop back out as we had transition toward the end of the week but yeah fish all this area up here on rattlesnake in pete's bend you can get back there in the back uh, again water level dictates pete's bend area back in there so it's it can be kind of mushy in some areas but it's very weightable uh, we found some some nice slot fish back in this area as far as the trout goes. Scattered redfish ever so often pick one up there, there here, there, and then again flounder as well. So, again, the the flavors that we've been throwing, and it doesn't matter which estuary we in because all these flavors that I'm talking about are they're very uh, work really well in all the different water flavors and columns. And what you have with it, of course, with the down south, which ones I've mentioned earlier, Big Papa Pearl, Copperfield, El Guapo, and then, of course, your standard ones, uh, Chicken of the Sea, White Ice, all those that have been a staple for a while, you know, uh, in the knock and tail, as far as the heavy metal goes, Greenbacks, those have been really good in there. Of course, you know, it's got the tail in that that's got the rattle chamber in it, so it's really kind of accentuates that sound. So if you've got a little bit dirtier water, it helps those fish locate and find your bait that you're trying to throw at them. Uh, the marker 54, the jerk shrimps, didn't do bad out here on this flat because you can, you don't have a tremendous amount of grass on some of that area out there, but you can bounce that thing off the bottom and it's really productive for you. Whether you like to do it under popping cork, if you like to freeline it, freeline it's my favorite way to do uh, the marker 54 shrimp so I can just jerk it around back there and just kind of let that thing sit and move and you get some opportunities with it so if you don't have that in your arsenal make sure that you get one or two of those and put that in there because it just gives you a, a different uh, target frame for those fish to kind of look at there are lots of shrimp that are in our base systems especially you know in the marshy areas you'll start to see those fish shrimp that are starting to move and fish are starting to chase so it's just something that you need to be aware of to have whether you're fishing out here in a point or you're fishing out in a cove or maybe fishing in a back lake whatever it's just something nice to be able to have just to change things up uh top water out here hasn't been super great didn't get a lot of activity on it just a few swirls but the but the plastic 16th ounce jig heads have been money to go to especially out here on the time on on this uh frame out here on the rattlesnake point and pete's bend area again majors and minors have been our key focuses when we've located and found fish it's all been in and around those time frames so make sure you hear me say a lot just make sure that you're incorporating that in your fishing day uh, you'll do yourself a favor and just just keep working in and around those time frames it'll happen you just got to be patient with it uh, again big moon's coming so make sure you downsize your profile of your bait that gives you more opportunities at fish longer during your fishing time frame.